March 1982. GBC adds three new gurus. Jayatirtha leaves ISKCON and joins Sridhar. Despite the growing cracks in the guru system, with the increasing number of fall downs among the 11, originally 11 gurus, the GBC votes in three new gurus uh, to add to the 11 Pancha Dravida, Gopal Krishna, and Srup Damodar. Pancha Dravida doesn't last long at all. The GBC considers Jayatirtha's act of openly and publicly glorifying Sridhar could potentially create major havoc in ISKCON. As it was, major, I mean, senior devotees like Tripurari, who is the main book distributor, and then Dear Krishna Maharaj, and now more and more of Srila Prabhupada's disciples, they had left, were leaving ISKCON, and now are taking Sridhar's full time guidance and shelter. Those Prabhupada disciples were now working to help Sridhar expand his uh, Chaitanya Math rather than remaining in ISKCON and helping to spread Srila Prabhupada's ISKCON mission. It became, you know, if it becomes public that all or most of the ISKCON gurus are taking Sridhar's guidance privately, then all the new gurus will also, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, that all the new devotees will also seek his guidance and shelter. ISKCON will be finished. Sridhar and the Chaitanya Math will overtake ISKCON. More explicitly, the ISKCON gurus will be finished. Why accept them when the new members can go directly to someone that even the ISKCON gurus are privately glorifying as being equal to Srila Prabhupada? Yet Jayatirtha had blatantly rejected the orders given to him by the GBC to stop glorifying Sridhar publicly. The GB GBC decide they must take even more drastic measures to stop Jayatirtha. This time at the GBC meetings, they ordered Jayatirtha to remove Sridhar from his heart and to stop glorifying him or face the strongest punishment the GBC can give. If he refuses, the GBC informed Jayatirtha they will expel him from ISKCON. The GBC thought for sure Jayatirtha would get the message and conform to their wishes. He certainly would not risk being expelled. He would have no recourse but to obey their final order. Jayatirtha stands up and tells the GBC that he cannot remove Sridhar from his heart and he considers their request a great offense. He then walks out of the GBC meetings and keeps walking right out of the Mayapur Chandradaya property and walks straight to Sridhar's Sri Chaitanya Math, followed by many of his crying and frantic disciples. This ignites a firebomb throughout is the ISKCON world. Jayatirtha was one of the original new Acharyas. How can he just walk out of ISKCON and go to Sridhar's ashram? Many of Jayatirtha's disciples in the temples all over the world, the temples that are in his zone, from UK to South Africa to Detroit, you know, they, many of them also left ISKCON and or created major disturbances at the temples. In the Bhaktivedanta Manor near London, we hear that Jayatirtha's disciples had barricaded themselves in the temple room, taking Srila Prabhupada's murti off the Vyasa sun and using Prabhupada's murti as a doorstop to keep Prabhupada's disciples or any other devotees from entering the temple and removing them. Devotees by the hundreds leave Iskand to follow Jayatirtha. Jayatirtha then creates a branch of Sridhar's Sri Chaitanya Math. And Durban, South Africa, my own brother-in-law was caught up in all of this madness that, and, and, and it created such a disturbance in his life. He was never the same afterwards and he left his body in a mentally disturbed state. Jayatirtha's leaving ISKCON exposed the fact that the GBC had been secretly seeking guidance from Srila Sridhar. Hundreds of Srila Prabhupada's disciples who were fed up with the GBC's failed policies, their lack of good management, and their now totally corrupt Zono Acharya multi guru system with its fallen, you know, after fallen guru, they began to look at Sridhar Maharaj as, as a ray of hope, a guiding light in the midst of the darkness and madness. He was, after all, a direct disciple of Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasvati. He was a god brother and a dear friend of Srila Prabhupada. 
more and more Prabhupada disciples started going to Sridhar for guidance. What the GBC had feared is now beginning to materialize. It became more and more obvious that the ISKCON gurus weren't the Maha Bhagavats that the GBC had proclaimed they were. And yet, Srila Sridhar appeared to truly be qualified, a real saintly devotee and self-realized. For many who left ISKCON and went to Sridhar, in their hearts, they never left Srila Prabhupada. They were fleeing from the insane policies of a wayward GBC and corrupt, tyrannical, fallen zonal Acharya system. For many, they felt it was the only way for them to remain Krishna conscious. Uh, it was either <clears throat> leave ISKCON and seek Sridhar's guidance, or leave ISKCON and go back to living in the material world as a non-devotee. To remain in ISKCON and put up with this madness just wasn't an option for many of them anymore. With so many turning to Sridhar, the GBC decided that things were really getting out of hand. Therefore, even more drastic action was needed to stop what they fear will turn into a mass exodus of devotees leaving ISKCON. You know, so what did they do? What they decided to do was worse than offensive and deplorable. It was reprehensible. The GBC chose to turn on Sridhar. They began to engage in a public smear campaign against Sridhar Maharaj. The same senior Vaishnavs who had been privately going to him, seeking his guidance and glorifying him in private as being as good as Srila Prabhupada, a number of these same GBC men turned around and virtually stabbed him in the back. In modern terms, they threw him under the bus. They publicly accused him of creating the havoc that was spreading in his con. Many Prabhupada disciples had gone to Sridhar seeking his guidance, so the GBC accused Sridhar of stealing Prabhupada's disciples, just like his other envious godbrothers had done in the past. The GBC propagated the idea that Sridhar is the one who brainwashed Jayatirtha and convinced Jayatirtha to turn away from Prabhupada and Iskhan and accept him, Jaya Sridhar, as his guru instead of Prabhupada. Some GBC men even said that it was Sridhar's envious plan not only to get one of their new acharyas but to, be, to become his follower, but that they would also grab all his followers and disciples with him and claim all of them as his disciples. So not all of the GBC members broadcast this, this poison, but a number of them fed this information to temple presidents and other senior members so that it would, the word would, would spread that Sridhar is to blame. He is the envious troublemaker. One disciple of one of Iskan's gurus left Iskan and took shelter of Sridhar, and Sridhar reinitiated him as his own disciple. This poured fuel on the fire, as the GBC saw this as proof that Sridhar was out to take their disciples away from them. They blasted him as being one of Prabhupada's, you know, envious godbrothers. I view these actions of those GBC men, I mean, it was, being, it was worse than duplicious, dishonest. It was offensive. Sridhar was a respected senior Vaishnava. He was a dear friend and god brother of Srila Prabhupada. In private, just months earlier, the same GBC men, they were seeking his advice. They were glorifying him as good as Prabhupada. And now they turn on him in such a vicious character assassination. The GBC felt justified as they just saw it as they, they needed to, what they needed to do in order to save Iskand. Shuddha Maharaj, who is now very elderly, he is actually older than Srila Prabhupada, and so he's, he's a most senior Vaishnav. He's deeply hurt, personally very hurt by the GBC's most appalling actions. His heart is broken. He's crying. He actually cried because over the pain he was feeling from being painted as being envious of Srila Prabhupada. He held Srila Prabhupada in the greatest respect. His, his, his dear friend, his godbrother, Sridhar then warns the other Prabhupada disciples that under such a GBC, Iskan will be destroyed. Now there are some devotees, some um, even of the Ridvik Ras devotees I've heard, they say that Sridhar was cursing Iskan, and he was cursing that Iskan would be destroyed, and he was envious, but no. He was simply hurt, and he was saying that under that GBC, Iskan will be destroyed. 
because of the horrible way they were treating a senior Vaishnav. But not all of the GBC members turned against Sridhar. A number of them continued to see him and seek his association and guidance. In a uh, future timeline, I will mention how Bhakta Chiru was one of the GBCs who went to Sridhar and explained what the GBC, why the GBC were doing what they were doing. He wasn't saying that was uh, okay what they were doing. He was just saying this is what they, why they did what they did. But that wasn't an excuse. It wasn't like, oh, that makes it okay. They can throw him under the bus and drive over him and, and uh, blame him, for, accuse him of being envious of Prabhupada, all of these things. Oh, because they're trying to save Iskand, they're trying to keep their disciples from leaving. I mean, did not make it okay. You know, but at least um, Bhakti True wanted him to know what was going on and, and to tell him that not all of GBC members agreed with what the rest of the GBC was doing.